Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about ORMs and raw SQL. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, can you give us some insights into ORMs and raw SQL queries on the back end? And the short answer is they're great for different things and they can be risky depending on how you look at it. Let me explain. So I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with this because like, can you give me, if you want me to give you some insights about say ORMs or object relational mappings, mapping, which is if we're just going to define it very quickly, it's basically just the process of converting in a very efficient, well, I wouldn't say efficient, that's the thing that we're going to talk about, but in a very simple way, at least from a developer experience perspective, data that is in your database into an instantiated model that is actually running in your running application. That is what an ORM is in essence allowing you to do. So whenever, you may never have thought about that all this all that much, but you, you know, when you store data in a database, it's usually just stored as either a string or a number or like a Boolean value. But most of, I mean, it's just a, it's usually, it's just a file on your file system that is storing all of this data in an optimized format, of course. But that's what it is. So it's writing to your disk. So how do you get like that data, all that text, quote unquote, from the database or from that file up into your running program that's running in your actual, well, it's running, uh, in memory at that moment. Well, if you want that to happen, that's where you're going to either have to just go to the file system manually with a raw SQL query. You don't really have to do that either. Technically, you don't need a database to do this. You could just have a file on your file system and then read the data or the bytes basically from that file up into memory, then convert that into a string and then convert that, or you don't have to convert it into a string, but basically convert those bytes into something that makes sense to your program. That's pretty much all you're doing. Now, a ORM will allow you to do that without having to do it. Like you can think of it as similar to a web framework. Now, you could create your own web framework. You could just create your own request handler that comes in and with the path and like parse everything yourself and so forth, but usually it helps you to just use a framework that does this for you to do all the routing and all of this stuff because people have already kind of solved this in a very standard way, which is very nice. It saves you time. It's the same thing with an ORM more or less. It's just a way for you to save yourself the hassle of having to create a SQL query, run that, get back all the data, then parse out the data that's coming in and then convert it into the right format and then instantiate like an entity or some model that you have and then map all of that data into that entity and then send it to whoever is going to whoever is looking for that data right so that's all it does now there are some prejudices against orms and one would be that it may not always be the most performant thing out there because certain queries can be very hefty and be a little bit tricky to do with with just an orm most people don't actually, do, I mean, you can tweak an ORM and you can actually do certain things with it to make it even more performant, but that's, it's not usually the sort of thing that you see the average programmer do. So what some people will do is that they will use raw SQL queries. Now, a raw SQL query is just, this, it's what the ORM is doing the same thing, guys. It's doing the exact same thing. It's just that it's abstracting away the need for you to type it all out yourself, but you can do exactly the same thing. So when you're doing raw SQL queries, there is one thing that you should always consider and that is the security aspect of all of these things because when you're usually querying raw things, you need to make sure that you're not being subjected to SQL injections or anything like that. So you need to, you need to be a little bit more careful and then your queries also needs to be, well, since they're not standard and being unit tested and things of this nature, which is usually the case with the ORM, like the ORM providers or the libraries, <clears throat> they usually do their own benchmark testing and make, they try to make sure that the queries are actually consistent. But if you're crafting your own thing, you could make a mistake that kind of, I don't know, selects all of the rows in all of the tables and do some weird thing. Like you could create a, you, you have the power to fuck up your queries, but you also have the power to optimize them. 
And if you know what if you know what you're doing, that's actually the main I would say the main reason to just use a raw SQL query. An example would be that let's say that you have a a big join. Like you're trying to trying to just fit together a very complicated model with, where you have multiple columns on different tables and you just want to create them and put them together into some meaningful structure. As an example, let's say that you wanted to grab some statistics. Now, what's beautiful about statistics is that you usually like you can create a model. Like you could create technically like go through the hassle of creating an ORM or setting up an ORM and then trying to like connect all the things. But the thing with an ORM is that it's really more optimized usually for entities like a user, a product, an order, these sorts of things, these types of domain entities, that's a very good fit for an ORM. But if you're doing statistics, if you just want to produce a number where you might have data from several different tables, then it might just be more efficient for you to do a join, like to do a raw query, just get out the numbers of the rows and then parse it yourself because it's going to be tricky for you to create an all and to create a model that knows how to connect different properties from different tables. Or rather, it might be more complicated. You can probably still do it depending on which ORM provider or ORM library you're using, but it might just be simpler to, to make a query. So what I want you to take away from this is that ORMs are usually very they're very common in enterprise level development, such as in Java and say C Sharp and so forth, because they're just a very convenient way for you to abstract away all the boilerplate code that needs to be written to just get, gather all the data for a user or a product or some of these entities. It just saves you time. It doesn't require much from you. But of course, you lose a little bit of control. You can't tweak things and do very complicated joins or very complicated queries. That's where you might want to do a raw query. Now these raw queries, maybe, I mean, you don't necessarily want to write a raw query to just get the user. That that's, doesn't really make all that much sense if you already have access to an ORM. So unless you're making something fairly complicated, some, such as gathering statistics or making a really big query, or a very, you, you might be gathering data from multiple tables and trying to squeeze them together into some type of super structure or something like that. If you're going for like customization or like highly optimized queries, then handcrafting them, handcrafting them yourself might be just the thing that you want to do. But be careful because you can also make mistakes when you're doing this and you might actually reduce performance when you're trying to optimize it. Have a great day.